Now we'll be solving equations using a balance scale. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to represent and solve one step linear equations with one variable using a balance scale. So here's an example of a balance scale. What do you notice and what are some things you're wondering about it? Well, one of the things I notice is that on the left side, there are two cylinders and on the right side, there is a cube. Now we have questions up here to help us guide our thinking. What might the cylinders weigh and what might the cube weigh? The one thing that I also notice is that on this balance, they're equal. So they're equal weight. One of them is not further down than the other, meaning that it's heavier. So that gives me a clue of some possible answers. For instance, I could say maybe this cylinder is two and the other cylinder would also have to be two. And in order to make this equal, as we're seeing, so you can think of there's an equal symbol here, the cube would have to be four. That's just one possible answer. Since there's no definite answers, there's many that you could have come up with. So let's take a look at some other scales. Here you'll notice we have ounces laid out. So each one of these is one ounce. And we also have pawns. Now our pawns are our unknown. And we know that those are called, our unknown numbers are called variables. So think about these questions for a moment to yourself. What does the black pawn weigh? How do you know? If the black pawn equals x, so x is gonna be our variable this time, what equation is represented by the scale? And how may you check to see if your answer is correct? I'm gonna jump into the equation first for myself. So I can see on one side, I have two pawns. And on the left side, I have one ounce, two ounces, three ounces, and four ounces. So since that's the known number, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Four, and I even put it on the correct side of the scale, equals, you can think about the middle as the equal symbol. And then what do you think? Would this be x plus two? Or would it be two x? It would be two x. Since we have the same pawn, we would multiply whatever one is by two to get their weight combined. So here's our equation so far. Four equals two x. Now we're gonna to need to start figuring out, well, what does one x weigh on its own? So we have a few options. Right now, let's just do it with a visual model since we have the option in front of us. I noticed that there are four ounces and it's making me think that for every one pawn, there will be two ounces. So I can see for the other pawn, there still are two more ounces left. So if I were to take away one pawn, that means on the other side to keep it balanced, I have to remove two ounces. This would keep my scale equal or balanced. And I've just been able to represent with a visual model that X or my pawn is equal to the number two. So we were able to check this time by manipulating with um, our manipulatives on the screen. Let's try that again in a different way. All right, so we have the same questions again, just to think about. We have a little variety in what we see in our picture. So right now I'm still seeing that we have four ounces on the left side, equal for the middle of my scale. And on the right side, it looks like I have one pawn, so I'm just gonna put X, plus an additional ounce, so plus one. All right, so we have our equation. Let's roll through solving our equation. So as we said, our equation would be four equals X plus one. Now, what I would do is I want to balance out my equation. I have a group of one over here, but I need to get rid of it. So X is just left by itself. So we kind of talked about this before. 
we will subtract, instead of adding, we're gonna do the opposite, the same number. So my one stays the same, but instead of adding, I'm going to subtract. Now whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So this would cancel it out. That would end up being zero, positive one with a negative one would get me to zero, they're opposites. And then I'm gonna actually do this over here, where I'm going to take four and minus one. So let's look at that visually, how that's working out without the equation. So as I said, I'm gonna take away, oops, wrong thing I'm taking away. Let's do it this way. We're gonna kinda of block it out. One moment. Okay, so let's block it out since that's the tool we have right now. So I took away one from over here, but I need to balance it out and do the same on the other side. So that's all I've done with this equation. So this would cancel itself out. Four minus one, we know would equal three. And our x or pawn is left. So now I know one pawn is the equivalent of three ounces. All right, let's try another one. Let's get rid of our drawing tools. There we go, not so distracting now. All right, so now we have three ounces. And on the right side, what do you think the equation would look like? I have one pawn, so one X. And then we have two additional ounces, plus two. All right, so now that we have our equation and our setup, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try to solve this one on your own. All right, let's work through it together. So I can see I wanna get the x by itself. I need to do the opposite of what I see here. So we're gonna go subtract two and we are gonna also subtract two. Now visually, I'm gonna scratch out two for right now, and I will also scratch out two. All right, those cancel each other out, and I'm left with x on my right side. Three minus two gives me one. And I can confirm that with my picture right here. I have one ounce left with one pawn. All right, last one. Give this one a try on your own and see, can you figure out the equation and what x would equal. Go ahead and pause the video now. So you'll see I came up with the equation three times x, and actually I'd wanna put them right next to each other, that's more accurate. Three times x equals six. I can see there are three x's, so three times them, and on the right side it is six. And it does matter in this um, example that they are in the correct order to show you truly understand the picture. All right, so now it's time to solve it. Okay, so I wanna get rid of three times X. I just wanna have X on its own. So what is the opposite of multiplying? Well, it is dividing. So I'm gonna divide this side by three. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. Okay, now I know three divided by three is gonna cancel itself out. Just gonna be one and leave me with the one X. And I know six divided by three is two. I can think of it as every time I saw this are my three groups. And so if I got rid of one pawn and then an additional second pawn, this is what I'm left for the third pawn to be equivalent to. And that's it for our video for today.